Ooh, dirty. Back in episode 45, I took delivery of an estate sale auction lot full of vintage computers, parts, and software. Included in that lot were over 300 floppy disks that had been kept in storage for the last 25 years. During their time in storage, many of the disks developed a problem. Although they were boxed up and kept in their dust sleeves, a percentage of them now exhibit mold growth on the surface of the magnetic medium. So what's going on here? Let's start by taking a look at the construction of the humble floppy. Here is a typical five and a quarter inch floppy diskette, introduced by Shugart in 1976 and used in home and business machines until they were superseded by three and a half inch disks in the late 80s and early 90s. The construction consists of a square PVC jacket that houses a magnetically coated circular medium. The hole in the center allows the drive spindle to rotate the medium, and a window in the housing allows the read-write head to contact the magnetic surface. An index hole allows the drive to identify the start of sector 1 on each data track. The magnetic medium is surrounded by an anti-static fabric layer that removes dust and debris as the disc spins. The medium itself is made from a thin, flexible mylar and is coated with an iron oxide layer that allows it to be imprinted by a magnetic field in order to store data. It is on this surface that the mold has taken root, presumably because the oxide layer provides a suitably porous surface, whereas the PVC jacket does not. This is how the disks were stored, boxed and in dust sleeves. What's interesting is that only some of them exhibit the mold problem and others are completely fine, even if they were right next to each other in the box. Here's an example on the extreme side of the badness spectrum. That is one dirty floppy. So let's open up one of these discs and see the problem up close. The plastic is extremely brittle after all these years and is just tearing apart in my hands. Mold spores are ever present in the air, but warm temperatures and high humidity present ideal conditions for it to grow. My guess is that these discs were probably stored in a damp or humid environment, like a basement. Mold that is actively growing may exhibit hair-like structures. This powdery residue is indicative of mold that is inactive. In this case, it's probably been dead for a long time. It's important that you inspect and clean your dirty discs before inserting them. So let's take a look at one technique you can use. I found this 3D model by Limaru on Thingiverse. It's a jig that's been made specifically to assist with cleaning five and a quarter inch floppy diskettes. The tool is comprised of three separate pieces, an enclosure to hold the disc, a rotating spindle to turn the magnetic medium inside the floppy, and a knob with a directional arrow that locks into the spindle. As always, I've placed a link to the model in the description. If you don't have access to a 3D printer, you can also purchase a similar thing on eBay for a reasonable price. Assembly is simple, but you will need one more thing to complete the build. The instructions call for a specific size of rubber washer to be placed on the spindle to assist with gripping the disc. I didn't have the material to make one, but I did have this packet of replacement drive belts in various sizes that worked for me. You could also try an o-ring or perhaps use a small rubber band.
Okay, enough beating around the bush. Let's get to cleaning some of the original titles from the auction lot that are so afflicted. Even the games in their original boxes weren't spared, although as you can see the extent of the mold varies from disc to disc. This title was even stored in a sealed plastic bag and was still affected by the mold. Unfortunately, there's no way to know how long ago the problem occurred and the disc could well have been damaged prior to being placed in the bag. Alright, so here we go. Dirty disc goes in the spindle, then the arm swings down and locks the knob in place. Next, I'll take a microfiber cloth for cleaning eyeglasses and spray it with some isopropyl alcohol. Now, just rotate the disc while wiping away the mold. You can spot treat affected areas or hold the cloth to the disc and rotate it a full 360 degrees to cover our larger area quickly. Don't forget to clean your backside. This is important because with a single sided disc such as this one, the back of the disc is where the data is actually stored. The bottom line is that you don't want to put a moldy disc in your drive, as it will quickly contaminate the read-write head, and then you'll be pulling that apart to clean it, which is a more involved task than this. An ounce of prevention, or something like that. And there we go, looking a lot better than before. There is some discoloration on the surface where the mold was, but there's really nothing for it now, except to check and see if this disc can be read or not. Promising. No weird noises, seems to be loading. Ah, success! One down, 299 to go. So, what about three and a half inch discs? Well, there are 3D models available for download to aid in cleaning these as well, and they follow a similar design. That said, in my experience, I haven't needed to print my own copy yet. The auction lot came with a good number of 3.5 inch discs as well. And while their bigger brethren suffered greatly over the years, none of the newer style discs I examined had similar problems. Perhaps the integrated sliding door is largely effective at keeping the spores and moisture out. It could also be that the materials used in their construction are less conducive to mold growth. As I noted earlier, Many five and a quarter inch floppies were also unaffected, which could come down to brand and construction, or simply how often they were exposed to the air and mold spores in it during their original service lifetime. So that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this bit. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Retro Bits. <laughs>